Hello. In this DCS tutorial, we'll go over the various methods of navigation for the P-51D Mustang. Navigation can be extremely tedious and time-consuming, which makes most people want to do easier methods. We'll go over the more realistic methods as well as the easier ones to give you the best ways to navigate in DCS World. Okay, let's get right down to the navigation for the P-51. The P-51's navigation can be narrowed down to about four different methods. Now keep in mind, these methods are just what I've narrowed them down to, and there could be other methods or other things to call these methods. The first method is the F-10 map navigation. The second method is the kneeboard navigation, or unrealistic kneeboard navigation or what I like to call abusing the kneeboard. Then there is the landscape and heading navigation and then there is instrument only navigation which is also called dead reckoning. These four methods of navigation make up different ways you can navigate and also different levels of realism of navigation. The first one should be pretty obvious and that is the F-10 map. The F-10 map is just basically like a GPS. It shows where you are, you can see yourself moving, and depending on the other settings of the map it can give you hordes of other useful information that is not normally available to the pilot. A GPS obviously was not put in a P-51 Mustang, so this is completely a cheat and only for lower levels of realism. For instance, if I wanted to navigate to Nalchik, I can see that it's south from me and can simply change my direction so that I'm flying south. Now, slightly more realistic than the F-10 map is the kneeboard. The kneeboard is, in most aircraft, just activated by pressing K. You can hold down K and see the kneeboard. You can use the bracket keys to switch to different waypoints that you have set and zoom in and out. Now, what's unrealistic about this kneeboard, you may ask? Well, it's not necessarily unrealistic. I mean, you can press Shift and K and keep it up there and navigate using your uh, instruments. But there is a simplified method of using it, which is simply using the Control K command, which actually, as you can see, puts a mark on the map of where you are and you're heading. The arrow is pointing in which direction I'm going. Now that I know that I'm a little off course, I can simply turn to the right a little bit. And once I'm pointed in the right direction, approximately, I can hit Control K again. And there it shows I'm on course, just off of my course on the waypoints. Now, this is obviously unrealistic because in order to put a mark on the map, the pilot has to go through lots of mathematical calculations and keep track of his instruments the whole time. Now, this isn't crazy unrealistic. There are some things that are automatically done for you in DCS. This is simply as if the calculations and math that a pilot does is automatically done, which it is slightly easier if you have a pen and paper in hand to do it so I can see why they simplified it. But this can easily be abused to simply be the same as the F-10 map by pressing Control-K over and over again and just showing where you are. That being said, if you do not use the Control-K, you can use the kneeboard in the more realistic method, which is using only the instruments to navigate. However, before we get to that, there is the instrument and landmark navigation. Landmark navigation is simply flying headings until you see certain landmarks and use those landmarks to judge when to fly your next heading in order to fly your waypoints. 
usually you can uh, either keep these headings in your briefing or if you have your uh, kneeboard set up to keep those headings or just remember the headings you'll start at the airport fly your first heading till the, the first uh, landmark arrives and then you'll simply change your heading from there landmarks can be used or known by just simply knowing the map you're flying in or studying the kneeboard in this example we can check our briefing and see that our first task is to fly 6-8 to the bottom of the lake near Honey. So, I don't know if I butchered that name or not. But right now, since I'm at my starting airport, I'm going to fly heading 6-8. 6 6-8 would simply be 6 on the heading indicator. Because, oops, I'm going the wrong way. It's important to remember that your heading indicator is in tens, so 6-8 would be right about there. A little bit more to the right. Now what I do is I simply fly this heading until I come to the location that I remember, and then I'll change to my next course. Alright, as you can see, I'm on course. My trim is doing a lot of help for me. It's helping me out a lot and I'm coming up on the lake right now. It's best to make good turns whenever you do this so you don't get off course. Navigation in the P-51 is by no means a very precise um, a very precise thing to do. It gets kind of messy sometimes and you have to correct for your problems that you create in the beginning. So my next course to fly is 140. So that's going to mean right now I'm going to need to take a right. And 140 is right there. So it shows up as a 14 on your heading indicator. And as you can see, arriving at Kutasi now. Now this is my preferred method of navigation, simply flying a course until you see a certain landmark, checking your map. However, you cannot always use this method. At nighttime, it can get very hard to see certain landmarks, and sometimes your flight path is either going to be so high as far as altitude goes that you won't be able to tell which landmark is which, or you'll simply be flying over the ocean, or flying over a lot of land that doesn't have a lot of landmarks, like open fields, plains, or forests, and this will prevent you from being able to navigate well at all. So that is where the instrument navigation, or what is called dead reckoning, comes into play. Okay, so in this example, we're going to be flying from Kabuleti here to Kolki here, using just instruments. Now for instrument navigation, um, you basically need to use math and your airspeed to calculate how long you need to fly in one direction. So it's very good to learn how to keep your speed constant, not fluctuating. Now I tend to have a hard time with this and so I'm going to show you another method to do that but if you can keep your speed constant you can simply you know calculate how long you should fly in one direction based upon how long the trip is to the first waypoint. So, for instance, if you're able to maintain your speed at 240 miles per hour and you had to fly, uh, let's see, uh, 16 miles, then that would be four minutes of flight time. Because flying at 240 miles per hour, you're traveling four miles, I believe it is, every minute. So, yeah, that's right. So basically, that's the main method of doing it, but that's that can be very hard because keeping the P-51's uh, power at a level that will maintain your speed or keeping the plane level so that your speed will not fluctuate can be very hard. So what I like to do is fly in that direction keeping an eye on my speed and every minute calculating how many miles I've flown. So if I'm at 200 miles per hour, I calculate how much I've flown in one minute if I'm hanging around 200 miles an hour, and then if I'm going up the next minute, if I'm at 240 miles per hour, I'll calculate that. 
So let's begin on our trip. And let's look at the briefing for the information. Uh, okay, so we have to fly 67 for 19 and a half miles. Now, 19 and a half miles, if you're if for every 60 miles per hour that you're flying, that's a mile every minute. So if you're flying 240 miles per hour, that's four miles every minute. So uh, that's basically what I use is I, in 60s, I calculate my speed as far as how many miles I fly every minute. And all I do is simply watch this clock right here to keep an eye on how many minutes go by just watching the second hand go around. And that's how I keep track of it. So first, let's fly six seven. Let's get on course with that. And since we're starting at the airport, and let's also trim the aircraft to make it a little bit easier to stay on course. Okay, so six seven is going to be right there. Now it is leaning to the left, so I'll correct for that. And now I'm flying at about 240 or 250 miles per hour. And I'm going to keep an eye on the clock till it goes around to where it was when we first started, which was right about there. But I need to maintain my course. And if I maintain the speed or go a little bit over, I'll estimate accordingly. So we're flying 19 and a half miles, if I remember correctly. So now I'm at 200 and. 70 miles per hour, so I'm going to need to estimate a little bit more on my distance that I fly. Need to bank to the right a little bit. This can get very difficult to keep track of, but it is a good skill to learn so you don't get lost. Okay. About a minute has passed now, and the speed has increased a good bit from 240, so that means we've flown about five miles. So that's only 14 and a half miles to go, probably only 14 now since we've gone well into the 280 mile per hour range. Okay, I'm on my last minute now. Once this minute is up and the second hand reaches around this area, uh, I've traveled my last four to five miles. That's how I like to do it, is traveling by the minute. It can get annoying for long distances, but hopefully for long distances you'll have more landmarks to go by because you'll fly past more things. And let's look at our briefing right quick and see what course we're supposed to head to next. That's 322, or 18.5 miles. Now, uh, that's my last waypoint, and that takes me to the next airport that I'm headed to. So I don't really need to worry about the distance, but this is the example. Looks like I'm still on course. Well, a little bit off. Just need to go to the right a little bit. And now my minute is up. So I need to change to heading of 322. There's 3-2, and 3-2-2 three, two, two would be just about right there. Okay, just a few minutes later, and I'm coming up on the airport now. You can see it right there. And I'm still on course. So as you can see, as proven here, this method does work. Uh, it is definitely not easy, and it's definitely not fun. But upon finishing a mission using this method or a more realistic method, you definitely will feel more satisfied knowing that it was done realistically in every way. The next DCS tutorial will be on landing, so that you know what to do once you arrive at your final waypoint.